Well, let's talk about long legs because I just got home from seeing it and I need to decompress. I need to confess to someone because I am unwell. So in case you've been living under a rock for the past several months, Neon just released the new horror movie Long Legs from director Osgood Perkins and it stars Micah Monroe as a young FBI agent who is on the hunt for a serial killer. Serial killer targets families and leaves behind cryptic messages for the FBI to decipher. The marketing for this movie has been insanely good. A few months back, Neon released some cryptic teaser trailers without saying it was for long legs. There was one trailer in particular called She's Not My Daughter, which was essentially a photo of a family, and over that it played a recording of a 911 call of a father telling the dispatcher she's not my daughter before flashing to an image of a young girl's leg sprawled out on the ground, presumably dead. It really helped set the uneasy tone for this movie that this was going to be dark, this was going to be disturbing, and weird. I watched no official trailers. I read no reviews, no interviews. I wanted to go into this movie as blindly as possible and I think that really helped my experience because I had absolutely no idea what I was in for. I went to see the movie on Thursday night for their Thursday night previews and every showing near me was practically sold out, which is amazing. I think that they've already made three million dollars in that night alone, so I think Neon is going to have a really great success on their hands with this movie. I think a lot of people are going to be divisive on how they feel about this one because unfortunately the marketing was so good that it built up this huge hype for the movie and many people have said it's the scariest movie they've ever seen so I think that's really gonna affect how people go into this movie. They're going to go in expecting it to be insane and crazy and the scariest thing they've ever seen and I don't think that's the case but I did still find the movie really scary but in a different way. The movie itself is incredibly moody and atmospheric. It is so unsettling and the dread is just suffocating. I was going through the whole movie at points holding my breath because I was just anticipating, okay, what's going to happen next? And I had no idea where the story was going to go. When you get flashes of intense violence or gore, it's shocking. My, t my chest was so tight throughout this movie, I could not breathe. And after I got to walk out of the theater, I was like, okay, I need to recover somehow. Like, I just felt so uncomfortable. I think that that uncomfortableness and that feeling that this movie gave me made me really love it so much. I think I rated it at five stars on Letterboxd, which is very rare for me. I never rate movies five stars. So the story is told in three parts, and over the course of the three parts, things get progressively weirder and creepier. It opens up with an incredibly uncomfortable opening scene, a prologue, if you will, of this little girl on her farmhouse and she encounters this creepy dude, aka the killer. And we don't fully see him, we just get a glimpse of him. And from what you see, you can see that he's unnatural looking. He is so creepy. And I was like, oh shit. Immediately, that opening pulled me in and I knew what kind of movie I was getting myself into. I knew the tone. It was just, it was perfect and I was like, yes, I'm in for this ride. Then we cut to present day. It's set in the 90s and Micah Monroe's character gets pulled into the long legs serial killer case because she helped bring in another serial killer based on intuition. She has some sort of gift that she is very intuitive and sensitive and she just gets things in a way that the other FBI agents don't. So she gets pulled into the case and she's pouring through the case files and we get to see news clippings and learn more about the actual murders themselves and see the victims and all of the victims are families. And these murders, the way they take place, there's a unique element to them that makes the FBI question everything. At the scene of all of these crimes are these letters that are cryptic and filled with symbols that are very much like the Zodiac Killer, and Micah Monroe's character ends up deciphering these messages and helping move the case along. Her character uses the Bible to help her decipher these messages, and you quickly realize that there's a lot of religious aspects to this case and to this serial killer, so this movie is very religious focused. There's a lot of religious symbolism in it, and I think that a lot of the stuff in the film is focused around the Book of Revelation. I'm not religious, I don't know anything about that, but I know that there are some people who've done some interesting deeper dives into the religious symbolism part of the movie. I would recommend watching Room for Screams video on TikTok. She did a great little breakdown of the different 
things that the movie represents. We get to eventually see glimpses of the serial killer throughout the movie, and he's played by Nicolas Cage, and he is absolutely terrifying. He is the scariest monster. He's not even a monster. He's a person, but he's so scary. The, the, the look of him is incredibly just, it's so uncanny. And when I saw him, it almost took my breath away because I was like, if I ever saw this person in real life, I would die. Like, it's just the way that like instant dread when you see his face, when he's on the screen and he speaks so unnaturally and moves his body unnaturally. He almost reminds me of like a kid's show host on like Channel Zero or something, like a very creepy child's show host because the way he's talking to the kids, he's, he's very bubbly and lively, but then he says weird stuff. And it just made me so uncomfortable and I was so terrified of him. And Nicolas Cage, brilliant, brilliant performance in this. And it's weird because he's very creepy, but he also acts over the top and it almost makes you laugh at times, but it's like an un uncomfortable laughter. And I think that while the movie is very serious, there are lots of moments of darker comedy sprinkled throughout. Just the way that Micah Monroe's character acts sometimes because her character is very kind of socially awkward. She doesn't emote a lot, but when we see her interacting with other people, like her boss's kid, she's like, just weird and it's just weird awkward humor at points of the movie which i thought was interesting because overall the movie is very dark very suspenseful and filled with dread and it's just eerie the whole way through i think the first two parts of this story are a lot stronger than the third part because the first two parts it feels like a straightforward psychological serial killer movie it very much had those seven vibes meets sinister too and a little bit of silence of the lambs in there as well it just felt almost like it was based in realism it was grounded and realistic like this is an actual serial killer that's doing some messed up stuff and when you get glimpses of the murders it's terrifying and then when we get to the third act it goes into a different direction there's also a big exposition dump towards the end of the story where you figure out what's actually going on which uh, nobody really likes exposition dumps. It wasn't, I wish they would have told that information differently or just showed us because they were doing so well with that throughout the movie where they weren't overly explaining everything. You find out what's actually going on. It just raised more questions than answers to me. But I will say, I enjoyed the ride. The journey was incredible. I haven't felt that uncomfortable watching a movie since I think... I don't know talk to me really upset me too it's just that that upsetting feeling that heaviness in my chest throughout the whole movie where i was just unwell cinematography is also just gorgeous this was the first real osgood perkins movie that i actually watched and enjoyed i'm getting the sense that he is very dark and moody because that's what this movie is and he has these really beautiful shots of the scenery and it almost feels immersive like there's moments where it's like the camera is overlooking the character as they're exploring this place and you feel like you're almost playing a video game where you're like holy shit what are they going to find around the corner and i really and liked those moments because they were super intense to me where i just i was so just bottled up in my seat and so nervous for what was going to happen and the shots are just beautiful even the acts of violence are beautifully shot as well so i think that if you like moody atmospheric horror that's more about style than plot i guess then i think you'll really like this one if you like serial killer horror that gets weird you'll like this one if you like religious horror you'll love this one it was just unique to me even though they took a concept that is pretty generic a serial killer story fbi agents searching for a serial killer they made it unique they made it their own and it was super interesting the pacing is great because there was never a dull moment in this movie it just goes non-stop from the moment we meet micah's character until the very end and i absolutely loved it i think this is a movie that will only get better with rewatch i feel like i'll be able to pick up on things i didn't before and going into it knowing where the movie goes things just might make sense they might be a little bit easier let me know if you plan on checking this one out please do please support your horror Horror, your indie horror and go to the theater to see it. It is so worth it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I look forward to hearing if you liked it, if you didn't like it, hear your theories. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye.